Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations, much love and respect to you, Akim, out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. This lesson is um, definitely through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, uh, because this situation that happened with HOY ties into what we've been talking about recently in our camp um, that being the Montreal branch of Great Millstone um, dealing with not being emotional you know um, it's not a good thing to be emotional in this truth okay it's not a good thing to be emotional in this truth and when you let somebody that's emotional get into the camp that's going to lead into problems later on down the line okay because satan likes to work like that he likes to work with people's emotions which is uh which is uh, tied to their flesh usually okay now this situation here which i'm going to play the video they did something not out of ration or reason or wisdom but they did something off of emotion. So I'm going to play this video real quick. Well, they're back at it. Specifically, the guy who leads him is called Chief Ephraim. This is House of Israel. And the guy comes up to ask him where a local taco spot is while they're teaching camp. And they assault If you do that, you're going to get, get, your, you're going to get your face smashed over. I promise you. Do what you say you want to do. You're going to get your face smashed over. Yo, back up. Back up, bro. You you serious? Are you serious? You 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 must you must got something on you, right? That's why you feel brave coming up here. You got something on you? You got something? Because if you pull it, you gonna you gonna lose. I'm I'm telling you, you gonna pull it, you gonna lose. Just back up and get get up out of here, man. Yo, hey hey man. Yeah, we're not fucking begging, man. See, that was completely unnecessary. <clears throat> okay. And, you know, us being out there, <clears throat> you know, we've been out there as many times when people came up acting aggressive, you know, talk, being, uh, you know, having, having spirits on them, demons on them, you know, and it doesn't escalate to the point where we have to get physical because, you know, you have to learn to de-escalate the situation because we're supposed to be as sheep in the midst of wolves. You're not supposed to be trying to portray this tough guy image out there, okay? The Lord said he sent us out there as sheep amongst wolves, you know? So you have to move in a particular manner to try to always de-escalate the situation as much as possible. You know, anything physical, that's the last resort. That's when people are coming and attacking you. This guy is this guy is not not a threat. Okay, he's not a threat. You know, and you can see here that now he's doing his Karen thing, holding his 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 face and all these extra things. But that's because you you put your hands on him when they shouldn't have put their hands on him. They should have just let it be, and kind of basically ignored him. If anything, bring out scriptures and ignore him, and eventually he would get out of there. You know. Now, let's get um. <clears throat> Since I mentioned it, let's pull up. Uh, This is uh, James 4 and 7. It says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to the Most High. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. How do you resist the devil? You resist the devil through being in the spirit. Okay? You don't resist the devil carnally. If you resist the devil carnally, then basically you, the devil wins. That's his, play, that's his playground. He's got you. So how you resist is you resist spiritually. Okay? You know, by keeping your guard up spiritually, by by not feeding in to what the devil wants you to do.
Because clearly if the devil's provoking you to get physical, that's what he wants you to do. All right? He wants you to make the first move. He wants you to do that. So what? I'll show you what. Okay? And this is what these guys fell into the trap of, man. <clears throat> Remember, the devil is walking around as a roaring lion, seeing who he may devour. He's looking to devour you. He's looking to find the opening, the chink in the armor. So you're not supposed to give him that opening, right, through carnality. It says, uh, this is 2 Corinthians 6 and 1. It says, we then as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of the most high in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation, giving no offense in anything. All right, so we're not supposed to give an offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. So they fell into that trap of the devil. So, you know, they created, they did this, which was an offense, you know, to these, uh, to these uh, so-called Christians, to these Edomites, to the, you know, to even, you can say, the law enforcement, if they get a hold of it, right, you know. That the ministry be not blamed. You see, because now they can use this. And, and as you can see, you know, vocab, the devil, he made a video saying, look, look, see what they're doing. See what they're doing. He's set up to accuse, as it says in Revelations, um, the 12th chapter, the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses us before the most high day and night. This is Esau Edom. He's set up to accuse you. And when you look up that word accuse, it says what? Categoreo. Right to categorize you, and he's trying to categorize you as a violent uh, extremist fringe. All these different buzzwords. Okay, and you look at some of those words; it doesn't even mean what Esau portrays it to mean in the society. Like radical, that just means of the root. Okay, you see, meaning what you're you're going back to the origins, and to Esau, that's a negative thing. <laughs> you see. But that's the witchcraft that Esau puts upon these people using words. Okay, it says, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of the Most High in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, and by long suffering. By kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by love unfeigned, by the word of the Most High. I see, by going through all these different things, man, imprisonments, tow boats, and labor, so on and so forth, we are supposed to keep our composure. We are supposed to not be emotional. We're supposed to be spiritual. Okay? And a lot of people that are in the truth, they, don't, they have not grasped this. That are so called in the truth. They have not grasped this, this art of being spiritual over being emotional and carnal. By the word of the of the truth, by the power of the most high, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying. And behold, we live as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet always uh, making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. You know, so you have to move, you know, in a, in, in a way like, OK, you might be in, 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 in poor to the world. Right. But you, you have to understand you have these riches. You see, you might be cash in hell, but we rejoice in the fact that we have the truth. You know, you have to constantly check yourself that you're in the right spirit. Okay, now dealing with being emotional, we're going to look up that word emotional. Okay, we're going to look it up here. <clears throat> First definition says relating to a person's emotions. Um. Right here, it says arousing or characterized by intense feeling. 
Okay? But let's get this one. Of a person having feelings that are easily excited and openly displayed. This is what, what we're speaking about when we say being emotional. You know, your feelings are easily excited. Okay? It means you're easily offended. Okay? Yahushai spoke about those uh, that are offended in him. Let's get that. And, and guess what? People got emotional when Yahushai spoke about uh, eat my my flesh and my blood, dealing with the bread and the, the wine, which represent this representing this truth, right? People got emotional behind that, and they left. They left Yahushai. Okay. Why did they leave Yahushai? Because they got emotional. They didn't understand. They couldn't. They weren't spiritual, so they got emotional and said, "F that. I'm not dealing with that." Okay. <clears throat> and it says, uh, Matthew's eleven and six. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Now let's look up this word offended. Scandalizo. <laughs> Sounds like scandal, right? Offend, make to offend, to put a stumbling block, an impediment, an impediment, in the way upon which another may trip and fall. Metaphor to offend. Well, that's it. Okay. It becomes a stumbling block to those that are emotional. Right. When you're emotional behind something that maybe a brother said or uh, maybe a brother did or whatever the case may be. You know, especially when it's not warranted. That's nothing more than a stumbling block to sift you out of the truth. Okay. And you might be, the demons might deceive you to a point where you think you're still in the truth. Okay? You know? You might have left a, you know, particular, uh, you might have left a particular camp and said, no, F that, because you got offended. And, and what uh, happens, you know, a lot of times is they get offended, they leave, or they get kicked out, and then they, um, and then they just start chipping away at the gospel, chipping away at the gospel. And then eventually they just disappear. You see? It says, um, to entice to sin, to cause a person to be to begin to distrust and desert one whom he ought to trust and obey. Give me one second. Okay, so, lock it. so let me read that again. It said to cause a person to begin to distrust and desert one whom he ought to trust and obey, right? Because you have a man of the Lord and he might tell you something that might, you know, that you might not uh, understand at that particular moment or, you know, you might get emotional behind it. And then you say, not nah, F it. He can't be a man of the Lord because I got offended because I didn't like what was said, you know, because a lot of you jakes think this thing is about you. This is not about you and your emotions and how you feel about things, man. Okay? <laughs> well, I didn't like it. Well, well, F you, man. All right? This ain't about you, man. Okay? This is about Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, man. We're just vessels. You see? So you have to look at the, the mission at hand and stop being so damn emotional, man. We don't got time to play with kids, like these people, um, grown men, like we play with, uh, play with children, man. Or or, or, or or women, you know, like, oh, now I got to watch the emotions. and Oh, no, I don't want to say that. That might offend him. We're supposed to be men in this thing, man. To be offended in one, to cause to fall away, to be offended in one, i.e. to see in another what I dis disapprove, <laughs> yeah, what I disapprove of and what hinders me from acknowledging his authority. Golly, because they're looking at the things that they disapprove of. No, I didn't. I didn't like when he said that. I, I don't like this that he runs the camp like this. I don't like that. I don't like that. You see, so I can't. So that's what makes them what not and not acknowledge that particular person's uh, authority. You see, but that's nothing more than a stumbling block for you. 
that's nothing more than something that the Lord put in front of you, in front of you, that you can trip and fall and fall out of the truth. All right, lest you be of the elect, then guess what? You'll you'll end up jumping over that hurdle. You'll end up jumping over that hurdle, and eventually you'll stop being emotional. Okay. Because men of the Lord were not emotional like that. On that level. Because there's nothing that Yahweh Shai could have said to stop the disciples from following him. To stop Peter and them from following him. Because they knew in the spirit that he was a man of the Lord. Okay. To cause one to judge unfavorably or unjustly of another since one who stumbles or whose foot gets entangled feels annoyed, <laughs> feels annoyed, right? To cause one displeasure at a thing, you know? And it and it be like those little things, you know? It's like little things. And then, and then you see brothers is displeased and, and they're emotional behind it. So what's going to happen with the big things? What's going to happen if the Lord puts a big stumbling block in front of you? How are you going to be able to get over that? You see what I'm saying? You can't accept, you can't accept uh, authority because of things you don't like. You know, something rubbed you the wrong way because it's all about you. It's all about what you think and what you feel as if you got it. You know, and brothers just got into the truth like yesterday. But no, but you got it. To be displeased, in indignant. Okay, now let's go to. Uh, <clears throat> hey, man, it. it, it these, this is not how a man a man of the Lord is supposed to carry himself, man. All right? Um, give me a second. Let me see. I say, oh, yeah. I wanted to get this. This is it. Isaiah 46. And it says. It says, remember this. Okay. And shoe yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. That's why the scripture says, uh, remember the days of old. You know. Because the days of old, men were, were more rough. They were more manly. They were less emotional. Look at all the things that Job went through. Right? His, his kids got put to death. His, uh, his wife left him. He, you know, he, had, he was sick. He had boils all over his body from head to toe. I couldn't imagine how that, that would feel. You get one, one little thing and, ah, nah, you know, a paper cut. Ah, shit. You know? <laughs> you know what I mean? This man had boils from the bottom of his foot to the top of his head, okay? He was being tormented with dreams, nightmares, nightmares rather. His friends were coming up against him. All these things Job endured. And what did the Lord say? He said to, 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 to gird up thy loins like a man. Well, in other words, what did, he, what did the Lord mean by that? Gird up thy loins like a man. After going through all that, just based upon what he told Satan. <laughs> Right? Not based upon anything Job did, but based upon what, what you know this conversation he had with Satan. He said, Gird up your loins like a man. Be a man. Stop being emotional. Get out of your feelings. Okay. Alright, so how much more for these little things? How much more for these little insignificant things are we to be men? Are we to be hardened? Are we to not to, to, to even, that's not even supposed to be a thought in our mind. Forget about it affecting you negatively. It shouldn't even be, it should, certain things you shouldn't even be thinking about. I don't like the way he said that, you know what I mean? Yeah, he, he didn't have to say it like that. You sound like them hoes that be on fresh and fit, man. You sound like one of them women that be on fresh and fit. Okay? Remember yourselves men. All right, gird up thy loins like a man. Okay, we're going to look up some, oh, matter of fact, we're going to look up manly traits, man. I do this from time to time. We're going to look up manly traits. Okay, this is uh, second. This is 2 Timothy 2, 
uh, verse 1, all right? Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Hamashiach, Yahweh and And that's not being strong. When you're emotional, you're, you're, <laughs> you're easily offended. That's being tender and delicate. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness. Okay, so we have to endure hardness. We have to endure things, you know, you know, things that we go through. We have to endure words. We have to endure rebuke. We have to endure things not going our way all the time. Like I said, this is not about you and your feelings and what you feel about a situation. I feel it should have been this. Nobody cares. Okay? You better grow you better grow up, man. You better grow up. You know? As a good cuz some brother no, it's okay. <laughs> you know, you're, you're a grown man, you're this and that, but guess what? You're acting like children. I've been to the army, I did this, I did that, but then you're still emotional. Okay? As a good soldier, of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. A soldier is not supposed to be emotional. Okay? <clears throat> uh, no man that warth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. We're here to please Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? Not to look good in front of men, not to, you know, not to impress the apostles, not, to, not the apostles, not to impress anybody. Elders, men over, not to impress anybody, really. Ultimately, we're there to impress Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. We reverence those men, you know, we you know, we want to do well by those men, but at the end of the day, it's about Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. It's not about looking good. You know, brothers always have a, sometimes brothers always have a response, you know, you tell them something. Oh, yeah, but it's this and that, and, you know, I had to do this and that, you know, you know, you know. My mother has cancer. No, but I didn't, no, we didn't, that's not the conversation. Okay, the conversation is just simply, you know, brother, if, if I'm just making a statement, you know, right? And brothers jump up and say, no, no, but you know, it was this and that. Well, I didn't point you out directly. Why are you defending yourself? You know, I didn't, I didn't pinpoint a particular situation. Why are you defending yourself? What you should do is you should take what's being said and, and, and apply it when it needs to be applied. If it doesn't need to be applied now, or if you know what you were doing was not, it didn't apply it in that particular situation, well, keep that between you and your how about should be I was shy, okay? And apply it where it needs to be applied. Don't know, it's not good to always be trying to have a defense, always have an answer for every damn thing, okay? <clears throat> um, hmm. Now, Let's go to um let's go to Proverbs the sixteenth chapter. Okay, because we're still dealing with ruling your spirit. Okay? This is Proverbs sixteen to thirty two. It says, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he and that was an example that you saw with H O Y, they were not slow to anger. They were not slow to, to, to wrath, to, to go and put you know, put their hands on somebody. You know, or to even the scripture says a soft answer turns away wrath. Do you think they apply that? No, they don't apply that because they're trying to be these tough, the tough guys. They're trying to be the king. They, they think when they think of being a Hebrew Israelites, the only thing that comes to their mind is King David's mighty men. There's a lot more. To, first of all, we're not in that time, and there's a lot more to the truth than that. Okay, we're not in that time as King David's mighty men. Okay, King David was but was taken. Over the kingdoms. We're in servitude to the enemy right now. So we have to move with wisdom. Scripture says agree with thine adversary quickly. When thou art in the way with him. You know that's why when Jake gets pulled over by the police. They don't know how to act. No, no, I'm not rolling up the window. I got rights and all this stupid shit. Just yes sir. How you doing police? Uh, oh, Mr. Officer give him the, the paper. Matter of fact have it ready. And just give it to him. Even if you know it's for some bullshit. Even if you know it's some harassment or some bs racism whatever the case may be just deal with it the way you need to deal with it to get out of there as quickly as possible 
you know, let the Yao by Shimiao Shai fight for you, man. All right? And they might do that, and then later on, they might get into a, a serious, deadly a car accident, man. <laughs> right? You see what I'm saying? You have to think like that, man. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city. So you have to be able to rule your spirit. Let's look up the word rule. <clears throat> to rule, to have dominion, to reign, to, to rule power you know you have to have power over your spirit govern which goes into governor to control you have to control your spirit all right to cause to rule to exercise dominion all right you have to be able to control it all right and when you see it when you feel yourself getting emotional over something that you shouldn't be emotional behind you need to rebuke this you need to rebuke satan okay you need to rebuke satan brothers need to do it and it's better to do it you know, you can do it in your head, but it's good to do it verbally sometimes, you know, to get to get those wicked, evil, petty thoughts out of your mind, because that's going to lead to, to more of a, a cancer spreading, uh, cancer spreading. OK, you know, you have to cut cancer off by the root. All right. So let's look up the, the Webster definition for emotional. It says of or relating to emotion, an emotional disorder dominated by prone to emotion, uh, appealing to arousing. Mm, let's see. All right. A marked, markedly aroused or agitated in feeling or sensibilities. All right. They get they get sensible. They got a lot of sensibility. All right. Which is what this goes into being sensitive. All right. Let's look it up real quick just to confirm. Use that goes into to being sensitive, man. The ability to appreciate and respond to complex emotion, emotional and aesthetic influences, sensitivity, sensitivity, a person's delicate sensitivity. Like I told you, that's that's not being manly or rough or hard or enduring hardness as a good soldier. That's being sensitive and delicate. A person's delicate sensitivity that makes them readily offended, readily offended or shocked. Okay. And one of the definitions for emotional was that you can easily see the offense in their face. You can look at a brother when a brother's offended sometimes and see it in his face that he's offended. Over nothing. All right? You got to pray to have a, a stronger mindset. You got to pray not to be offended, to, you know, to be less emotional. But then if you ask that particular brother, right? No, you're being emotional, bro. Nah, nah, I'm not emotional. I'm the least emotional guy on the planet Earth. That's not good. These are not good traits. These are not good. Okay, these are not good. These are these. Th that's the old man. Okay, and you, you, bro, you brothers, you better, you better get rid of that. You better get rid of that. I'm gonna say that straight. You better get rid of that garbage, man. All right. This is this is number two. In the sense of sensitivity, synonyms, sensitivity, responsiveness. You're everything you got a damn response to. Right? Say something, nah, 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 it's this and that. Nope, 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 nope. That, yep, 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 yep. Well, sometimes you just need to take things in and apply it where it needs to be applied. Okay? But then you ask these brothers, you know, oh. You know, I think you're being uh, emotional and I think such and such, you know, you got a problem with this and that. No, I mean, I, I mean, of course, no, no, no. Since I was a child, I've never been emotional. I've never been this. I've never been that. I'm, I'm No, 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 no. Of course not. It could never be them. These are not good traits. These are not good traits. Okay. So. <clears throat> which, which I want to go into to manly. Let me see manly traits. Manly traits. 
versus feminine. And there was one that was real good, <laughs> but um, I I, I might have saved it, but I'm not gonna look for it now. But um, it was one that was real real good that they had um. <gasps> Excuse me. Okay, masculine traits is let's lock it. Let's move this to the side. It says um, strong, controlled. You see that? Controlled. You see that? Meaning what? You can control yourself. You can control your emotions. See. You brothers better learn to be uh, be more um, controlled, more masculine. You know, not to be offended at rebuke, not to be offended when brothers say certain things. Because if you're offended at little things, how much more the small things? The, the scriptures tell you that if you can't, uh, if he's unfaithful in little, you know, how can he be faithful in, in much? Right. So how, how what's going to happen when something serious comes about? You know. Or when e or when Esau comes in in, 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 in uh you know threatens your family your children or whatever you know if, if it's between that now what are you gonna do are you gonna sell out see we can't trust brothers that are emotional we cannot trust brothers that are emotional we don't know what they're gonna do in the time of trouble man focused powerful centered you have to be centered get your mind get your emotions centered balanced purpose driven. Uh, which the purpose is to serve you, how about Shemiah was shy, right? Tells you that Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Love's a challenge, competition, and you should challenge yourself to be better. You should challenge yourself to over, to, to, to break down that old man and stop staying, stop being comfortable, man. Break down the old man. Challenge yourself to be better, man, in the spirit. Single task oriented, problem solver, right? If you got a problem with you, you need to, you need to solve that problem. And stop, stop pointing the fingers at other people because that means what? You're not focusing on the problem that's within you. Wants freedom and release um, makes big things small. Oh, goodness. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't think that's... I don't... No, 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 that's actually... No, that's good. All right, I was thinking of it. Right, because right, right, women make small things big. <laughs> you see that? Men make big things small. In other words, they're not emotional behind those things. They say, oh, no, that's light. I'm going to overcome that. They don't get emotional behind little things. That's something women do. You can clearly see this is feminine traits. It says make small things big. Yeah, they, they blow things out of way out of proportion. They constantly do that. <laughs> constantly. All right? Constantly. All right? All right? So this is not how men ought to be. This not uh, this ought not be amongst men. Forgets needs, forgets needs admiration. <laughs> needs admiration. Golly. Forgets needs admiration and appreciation. Wants to be needed and respected. Okay. Anyways, um. You know, but anyways, so you clearly see, see, and going to the feminine side, you see a, a, a emotion driven, <laughs> emotion driven. All right, emotion driven. You see, you see that. Okay, so I don't have to get any more. Let's get um. Right, this is a beautiful one. This is beautiful. I want you both to listen to this one, very, very closely okay okay and we're gonna go down to um uh i'll start it i'll start at verse right in the ball well, yeah this was a foolish man you know, and he and he was acting like a, a real a hole to um to King David. You know, and he ended up being put to death. But I want you to listen to what they said about him and his mindset. It says, "This is First Samuel's twenty-five and seventeen. It says, now therefore know and consider 
what thou wilt do. For evil is determined against our master. Speaking about Nabal. And against all his household. For he is a son of Belial. Let's, when, someone's, when they say you're a son of Belial. We're going to look that up in a second. That a man could not speak to him. Meaning what? You can't tell him about himself. He will not accept it. Okay, he will not use it. Nope, nope. It's always somebody else. It's always nope, nope. Oh, no, no. You're taking it out of context. Taking that out of context. Nope, nope. That's not speaking to me. You're taking it out of context. That's being a son of Billy Al. Okay, which goes, I believe, into worthless. You know, just being a, a complete, uh, um, um, unreasonable man. Not not being a man. That's not a trait of how a man of the Lord acts. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, we've seen these type of guys before. Okay, we identified these type of guys before. What happens is they get kicked out. They get kicked out or they, they or they end up doing some wickedness. They end up doing some madness because they're driven by emotions. Belial says, uh, Belial, wicked, ungodly, right? Evil, naughty, one ungodly men. Naughty, one ungodly men. Worthlessness, like I said, it said man, worthless, worthlessness, worthless, good for nothing, <laughs> unprofitable, and you're you're unprofitable to the body if that's the case, man. You know, but showing you, listen, such and such and such, nah, 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 f that. Okay, all right, cool then. Let it be like that then. You see what I'm saying? Our mindset to be to should be to serve the body and where the body needs to be served. The body don't doesn't need to be served based upon how you think the body needs to be served. The body needs to be served on how you no know, the heads on down the head on down thinks it needs to be served, man. Okay, through Yah the spirit of Yahweh should be our shy. If they say no, that ain't that ain't what it, what needs to be, then that's not what needs to be. Nah, I think it needs to be. No, what what the fuck? Did this, the, the, who the fuck are you, man? All right. You see th these these type of things, man. It's like, is is Jake? Jake, man, Jake. You know, is Jake? Is you know they've been raised by their moms. They 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 they, they got their, their traits of their mothers, and they don't they don't know how to act like men. And when you just come into the truth, you have a lot of that emotional thing in you. But you know what? The Lord is dealing with a guy who's looking at himself and saying, you know what? I got to get this out of me. You know, which brothers came into this thing and certain brothers came in, you know, more emotional than others. But guess what? You know, you, you know, the Lord is dealing with a guy who says, you know what? I see that I'm being emotional. I see such and such. And I'm going to work on that. A, a Lord, the Lord is dealing with a guy like that. But a guy who always has excuse, you bring it up to him, it's, nope, nope, it's not me, it's the moon, it's the stars, it's, nope, it's that brother, that brother was off. Nope, that brother was off again. It's never, oh, it's a lot, you know what, you're right, you know, I was going off, I was, you know, I was being, I was being stupid. You never hear that, that's not a good trait. That is not a good trait. Wicked, ruin, destruction, so on and so forth. So, <laughs> hey, when you have that, when you're hyper emotional, you're 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 uh, a son of Belial. Okay, that's it. And you need to take that out of your. You need to take that mindset uh, out of your mind. You're being a, you're being like the son of Belial, rather. Okay, like a son of Belial, rather. Okay. <clears throat> hey, man, and and hey, it's, it's, who needs to hear it? Is hey, if it's if you feel you're being convicted in the spirit, then this is speaking to you. All right. This is uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I'll start at verse 5. It says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt <coughs> first in my grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that uh, that in thee. Uh, right, right, so speaking to Timothy. Uh, Wherefore, I put thee... In remembrance that thou that thou stir up the gift of the Most High, which is in thee, by putting on of my hands, for the Most High hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. How are we going to get through Jacob's trouble? By having a sound mind. being uh, stable 
Okay, being emotional is not having a sound mind. Women are not going to have a sound mind in Jacob's show. Okay, they're going to be scared. <laughs> Something drops, they're going to be scared of everything, man. No, no, what are we, how are we going to eat? How are we going to do this? How are you going to get through Jacob's trouble? By having a sound mind. The brother Amwas made a statement. He said, that can't be good in the, in the, um, in the time of, of Jacob's trouble. And I agree 144%. That emotion, that being emotional is not going to fly in Jacob's trouble. And if you still got that mindset, <laughs> don't expect the spirit to just land on you. No, no. Listen. Okay? You have to break down the old man before Jacob's trouble. Okay? So the Lord can have something to work with. All right? This is uh, Isaiah 33. And you can trust me. The demons can deceive you, eh? There's a person who came on the comment board. He said something. I'm going to do a video on that. The demons can deceive you to make you think you're in the right. That the spirit is working with you. The demons will jump on other people to, to confirm, yo, you're a man of the Lord. Just to say random things to you to just to confirm, <laughs> to further co confirm, you know, what you're saying. All right. <clears throat> so, hey, Satan is very crafty, man. Okay, this is Isaiah 33 and 6. It says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. Okay, so wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability, meaning you will be you will not be going to and fro. Scripture says, Be not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, because you're not stable in the mind. Right, you'll be listening to this camp. Oh, 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 I like that doctrine, but then I like this, and then I like that. Or a brother will say something, say, Oh, that made me feel like this, and then that made me feel like that, and then this and that, and that made me feel like this. Okay, so that's called not being stable, that's called being emotional. This is Matthew 7, verse 24. It says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine. And doeth them, hear the words of Yahweh should be out shy. But you see, that's the thing. You can't just be coming out to the camp. And just because you put on the garment, that doesn't make you right. Or you, you, you con, con. And you read scriptures, that, shallow, that's right. That doesn't make you a man of the Lord. It's what you do outside of that. It's what you do even when you're not at camp. Even when no one's watching. You know? The things that are in your heart. You see? And it's not to say that we don't have foolish thoughts at times and brothers don't get emotional at times, but you have to rebuke those thoughts. You have to rebuke those thoughts. And you, first of all, the first step, even Esau says this, right? The first step of, of, uh, of solving a problem is admitting you got one. If you don't admit that, you ain't going to be, you ain't going to, why would you solve something you don't have? Why would you solve a problem you don't have? Therefore, whosoever Heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and that's the troubles, the tribulations, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Okay? So if you're not, if your mind is not founded upon a rock, if your mind is not stable, well, when those floods come and those things, who, there's no telling what you might do. And guess what? Don't tell me it can't happen. Oh, it's a man of the Lord. It can't happen to someone serving the Lord. Oh, yeah? Well, what happened to uh, jo um, uh, jo um, Josiah? What happened to Josiah? Or well, that other individual. I forget his name. I forget his name. Um, but he tried to go and kill kill the, kill the elephant to get a name for himself. Well, they got put to death based upon their emotions. Okay, doing what they want to do. All right. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these um, sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which uh, which built his house upon the sand okay so when you're not living in the spirit you're not doing the things you know according to the spirit you're not taking uh counsel you're not listening to the men over you to take counsel and to take reproof which is really the spirit of Yahweh you're gonna end up in a deep ditch you're gonna end up in a deep ditch i'm gonna tell you straight okay you're gonna end up in a deep ditch all right 
tell you from experience of things, you know, certain things that, you know, which it was a few times, man, but, you know, all I needed was those couple times. You know, all I needed was a few times to really to understand, you know, certain decrees and things like that. I'm talking about even before I was in the camp, you know, before I was in the camp, you know, certain things the apostle said, and I said, okay, yeah, I hear them, you know, they're right, but, you know, and then I go and do something, and then boom, something bad happens. I said, and I knew why the Lord did that. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah I should have listened. I should have took the, that, that advice and counsel from that man of the Lord. But, hey, you do what you want to do. Like I told you, you're going to end up in a deep ditch, man, with that mindset. This is Matthew 7 and 27. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house. And get, like I said, if you're offended by this, good. All right? If you feel like you want to go and do your own thing, go ahead and do it. All right, because like I said, man, hey, this is only this is only for the elect. Okay, you feel the Lord is dealing with you on, on a solo level. Go do your thing on a solo dolo. We don't need that emotion, emotional uh, vibration amongst us, man. We're looking for the hundred, the hundred. The Lord is looking for one hundred and forty-four thousand men. And the rain descended, and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Yahweh Shai had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So, anyways, with that, we're willing that was edifying to the elect. And um, I'll say Shalom.